intral venous cluster to the internal jugular to subclavian before and uh, of course the more trials of uh, the central vein the higher the possibility that you may get thrombosis of the uh, neck veins which extend down to superior vena cable and then you end by superior vena cable suction so we consider superior vena cable of suction not as a complication of chronic failure or vein disease itself it is a complication of the maneuvers which are done by the doctors uh, in order to uh, continue the patient on the uh, hemodialysis because in the beginning we don't have options we have to find central vein here or there so we finish with gynecomastia and the dilatation of the vein then what else in the chest in the chest are very important make sure that your patient doesn't have pleural effusion the best is to examine the chest from the back uh, so as I was saying that you, uh, you have to examine for uh, one two well, two important uh, three actually one of them by percussion and two by auscultation before doing percussion you should ask a patient to put his arms and his hands as I, I, I showed you before one is on this shoulder the other here and first you have to detect uh, the presence or absence of pleural fusion. So, uh, 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 examination of the chest is of significance in a patient of renal failure because many of them may have volume overload. So, they may be congested. They may come with uh, bilateral pleural fusion. They may have actual pulmonary congestion of pulmonary edema and they may have inflammation of the pleural in the form of pleurisy. So, let us see whether he has uh, pleural fusion or not. You notice that I put his uh, hands on uh, both shoulders in order to wing the scapula away from the middle line so I can percuss. Uh, usually percuss, you percuss first to the paravertebral line and then when you reach the angle of the scapula, you percuss the mid scapular line. Compare bilaterally, that is resonant, 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 resonant. And dull. Again, listen. That is resonant, but here this is dull. Again, resonant. This is dull. So I ask a patient to take a deep breathing. خد نفس عميق محارب اكتمه بصدره. أي خليه مكتوب. It's still dull. What does it mean? It means that there is fluid here. خلاص. Nerves. So I percuss until I get dullness. Once I get dullness, I ask patient to take a deep breath and hold it. Why? This is called tidal percussion. If the area of dullness is changed to be resonant, then this is the normal because uh, it is called uh, infradiaphragmatic dullness because of any abdominal structure. But if it is main dull, as in this case, this means that the dullness is supradiaphragmatic and most probably in this patient uh, will be due to pleural effusion. And I have to compare bilaterally. It happens that this patient has pleural effusion only on the right side. The left side is resonant all over till the end. What about the auscultation? Auscultation of the lungs uh, and pleural. So ask patient to take a deep breath, خد نفس الله, in and out, again, again خد نفس, خد نفس كمان, خد نفس, نفس, كمان, كمان. I'm listening to plural rub because this patient is in failure, you may make toxins, you may have pleurisy. But not only that, I have to listen to plural rub from the front. The basis here of the lungs can be very simply auscultated down here could never stop now I'm listening to and trying to find some uh, crepitations come on the crepitations which uh, characterizes the pulmonary congestion as everyone knows are fine basal bilateral so so there are three criteria for the crepitations of pulmonary congestion in patients like that they should be or most of the time they are fine and they are basal down and they are bilateral so if uh, the findings of these basal 
fine bilateral cutations and a renal failure patient simply indicate one explanation that this patient is congested with fluid and we have to uh, do something about that. So pleurisy and pulmonary congestion. These are the two main findings which are of significance to us in patients like that. As I said in the very beginning of this demonstration that uh, our patient here uh, unfortunately or he is unfortunate because he has renal failure followed by kidney transplantation and then the transplant kidney failed and that's why we look at the abdomen and find some disfigurement. In order to examine the abdomen as usual, you sit on the foot of the bed like that and then uh, make sure that your patient is centralized, his arms are beside him, the head is more or less flat and you notice here very clearly that there is asymmetry of the abdomen. The left side is bulging. And then after that, the, the, the aim of sitting in the foot of the bed is only to comment on symmetry. Not to comment on something else, symmetry. Now we come in the right side again and comment on the other aspects of the or points of uh, uh, inspection. That's to say, what type of breathing he's having. It's clear that it is uh, uh, abdominal thoracic in this patient, could never. Yeah, it's abdominal thoracic. And then what is that one? Uh, it could be mass, could be uh, something else. But notice that there is a big skull. It's clear the skull. This one, the white. That skull. It's a big one. And the left side. So how to describe it? We say that there is a, an, an oblique skull extending from the left hypochondrium to the suprapubic area. The skull is approximately 20 centimeters or so, uh, about. The skull is ugly. It means that it, uh, it healed by secondary intention. There should be, uh, uh, might have uh, been infected after operation. And uh, uh, this skull is complicated by <coughs> Notes what happened. <coughs> Bas, khalas. This is called incisional hernia because uh, when you cut in the abdominal muscle, the abdominal muscle become weak, especially if the uh, uh, abdominal muscle get infected or you get subcutaneous infection, etc. Like what happened in this. Now, why they, they, they did that one? It's very clear that uh, uh, that's for kidney transplantation. So underneath that scar and that hernia, kohtani, <coughs> underneath this is the transplanted kidney. Make sure that it goes down. And uh, then what else? Any other scar? There is a scar here. Dear Shan Ayam Halim Dil, Lamalidi. Yes. 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 Uh, notice here that the uh, so-called linear alva or the midline structures uh, are shifted or pushed aside by the mass, which is nothing but the failed kidney or transplant kidney. The dilated veins, uh, again, I, I'm sure you can see it here, that blue one, uh, it is uh, filled from above downwards. It's filled from above downwards. It's filled from above downwards. And why is that? Again, that is because of the occlusion of sphere in the cave, which lead to all these dilated veins, including uh, extending from the chest to the abdomen, and even lower than that. So what did I say till now in the inspection? That it is asymmetrical, bulging on the left, that uh, this bulge is associated with incisional hernia. The skull itself is ugly skull, indicating that healed by uh, secondary intention and uh, the uh, dilated veins which are extending from the chest down, the umbilicus which is still centralized and it is inverted uh, and no uh, visible uh, pulsations like epigastric or whatever, no visible peristaltic movement. Uh, uh, that is in general the abdominal examination, but what is of significance to us as a nephrologist and for you as a, a student who wants to know how to examine the kidney uh, in a patient. What is important? Important is that one, 
skull, get here near transitional. The kidney, which is transplanted underneath, actually, unfortunately, it failed. And these dilated veins, which reflect the obstruction of superior vena cava. Does he have ascites, for example, because it is of significance to detect ascites in a concave patient? But I don't think so. Why? I don't think so. Because every patient has ascites, the umbilicus usually become flat. But this umbilicus, as you can see, is inverted. It doesn't exclude 100%, but it's a point against ascites. The umbilicus is centralized between the sepoid and symphysis pubis, exactly in the center. In patients with ascites, we expect the umbilicus to be pushed down. Ascites, usually the flanks are full, but the flanks of this patient, they are okay, they are not full. So by inspection, he doesn't have, uh, or he doesn't look to have uh, uh, ascites or acidic fluid. And then we move to palpation. Now I will concentrate on palpation of the kidney, what is concerning the kidneys. But generally speaking, you have to check first for any tendons or rigidity. If you have any pain in the body, طيب أنا هضغط على بطنك إلى حسيت ألم قول. But while I'm pressing, I want uh, everyone to concentrate with the face of the patient. Because how do I know that he is in pain or this tenderness? I look at his face. If he is in pain, he will get that expression. And especially if I press on that side, that is the transplanted kidney. A tender transplanted kidney is not a good sign. May indicate rejection, may indicate abscess, may indicate infection underneath, etc. So now I'll start uh, the palpation while I'm looking at the face of the patient. We start from the right iliac fossa and looking carefully. Now I'm pressing on the kidney again. No tenderness. I'm looking at his face. I'm looking at his face until I reach the first point. P.I.L. No pain. So he doesn't have tenderness and even there is no tenderness on the graft, we call it graft, the transplanted kidney is called graft. You have to know how to palpate the original kidney and how to palpate the transplanted kidney. The original or the, uh, uh, his uh, kidneys before transplant are located extraperitoneally, in the retroperitoneal space, not intraperitoneally, and they are on both sides. It's called renal angle. You should be palpate, uh, it should be palpated by, by manually, not by single hand. So I will push one hand in the renal angle, the other one from the front. Then I ask him to take a deep breath. If the kidneys is lar uh, are large, I will feel while he is breathing in and out, some cystic structure moving up and down. And of course, we do the other side, by manual, should be by manual. Put nafas amir, nafas amir, nafas like that. And then if I feel his original kidney in its place and it is large and I feel it moving up and down, then I give the so-called, or I do the so-called ballot. I push and then feel from the back. If the kidney is enlarged and I give a push from the front, I should be able to feel the kidney pushing or hitting my hand from the back. That's called posterior ballotment. That's for palpation of his original kidney. And this happens when the kidney is enlarged. Uh, can you get enlarged kidney when there is chronic kidney failure? Of course. Uh, usually you get small shrunken kidneys, but you may get also large kidney. When a patient, for example, who is having obstruction down, uh, giving hydronephrosis. Chronic hydronephrosis can end by renal uh, failure. A patient who's congenital, uh, heredofamilial, sorry, heredofamilial disease. Heredofamilial is a classical example everyone knows uh, is the polycystic disease of the kidney. Polycystic disease of the kidney is a disease associated with large kidney. A patient with uh, tumors, bilateral. Uh, what I mean that, yes, you may get uh, enlarged kidney uh, with chronic renal failure in some cases. It's not very common, but it happens. 
So I finish now the palpation of his original kidneys, and I move to palpate the transplanted kidney. Transplanted kidney is palpated by one hand. And uh, I feel the kidney underneath my fingers, and uh, you can even see it. See? That one. I think it's clear. This one. Uh, and uh, what, uh, what is abnormal here? That it is small. It extends from this point to that point. That's about five centimeters. What, is, uh, what does it mean? It means that this transplanted kidney is shrunken uh, and is fibrotic now. It's not functioning. It is a graft rejection, chronic graft rejection over years. And so with the amalia in how many years did you do this? About 20 years. 20 years. So over these last 20 years, the kidneys start to lose its function gradually until it reaches a size like that. Uh, so we call it chronic renal failure after kidney transplantation. And uh, a patient is back to uh, uh, hemo or peritoneal dialysis. Uh, one of them, of course. And when you press, as I said before, you decide about uh, the kidney, which is palpable, like a description of any mass. What is the site? Left iliac fossa. What is the consistency? Firm. Size? Uh, five to six centimeters. Tenderness. Look at the face. The alum? Yeah. It's not tender. Pulsatile, if it is pulsatile or not, I pray. It is not, not pulsatile. Uh, skin overlying it is not attached to the skin. Is it attached to the underlying?